It's June 21st, 2021, and this is my reaction to the recent Jimmy Dore video, John Stewart embraces lab leak theory as Colbert freaks out. So if you didn't see the video, basically John Stewart went on the Colbert show and made a joke about coronavirus implying that the virus leaked from a lab. And Colbert was uh, trying to stifle his own laughter and trying to talk over John Stewart and get him to stop. And Jimmy Dore was criticizing Colbert both from a political and a comedic perspective, saying it was inappropriate to let John Stewart, um, you know, to try to stop him because he was doing a good job. He was speaking the truth. And, you know, Stewart spoke truth to power on The Daily Show for, I don't know, 14 years or something uh, before quitting in 2015. So I want to applaud John Stewart for criticizing, you know, for trying to talk over Colbert for trying to say something true while Colbert was shutting him up. And I want to talk about how Stephen Colbert is a bad guy. And I, I want to agree with Jimmy Dore that he's a conservative. Colbert is not a progressive. He's a fake progressive. He's a fake liberal. I think he's trying to blur fiction with reality on his show. You know, he was on the, he had the show on Comedy Central where he's like playing a conservative. I think that Colbert has got like, he's gotten to the point where he can just say anything and it's as a conservative or a liberal, and people don't care. It's just like, whatever he says can be funny, even if it's offensive. He Oh, if it's offensive, I did it as a conservative, or I did it as a tongue-in-cheek liberal. And if it wasn't offensive, then it's as a liberal, or it's just a regular non-political joke. So Colbert, th there's a kind of nihilism about him. And it's because, if you don't know about this, he is a Catholic school teacher. Like, he's a conservative Catholic. He might be, like, a conservative Democrat, but he culturally, he's conservative. He's a Catholic Sunday school teacher. He's from North Carolina. Stephen Colbert is a conservative. Now, that said, that doesn't mean that Jon Stewart is a great guy and that everything he says is gospel. Like, I wish he would have criticized Israel and Netanyahu a lot more. We probably wouldn't have had to deal with a 12-year Netanyahu regime if Stewart had, you know had Bernie Sanders or Ralph Nader on a show to like talk about Israel's crimes. And frankly, I think it's because Hollywood and DC, like DC has infiltrated Hollywood, the military and the Pentagon and the CIA and Operation Mockingbird with Operation Mockingbird, they've infiltrated the media, they've infiltrated CNN, everything you come, everything you hear from CNN is State Department controlled media. Um, so to some extent, there's going to be some liberal comedy hosts who are secretly controlled by that. And Stephen Colbert is an obvious example. But I think that Jon Stewart is one too. So, you know, Stephen Colbert is, for all intents and purposes, Jay Leno Jr. He's the heir to the Doritos throne. Like, look, look at the bag of Doritos on my desk. I'm doing this as a conservative. Look at how consumerist I am. It's so funny. But seriously, buy Doritos. Like... That's not comedy. That's an ad. You know, people criticize Alex Jones and, you know, you might be right to criticize him. But here's the thing he says. He says, my show isn't even the show. The advertisements, the advertisements are the show. The The show is an ad for the advertisements. That's what Alex Jones says. And it's like, OK, he sounds crazy. He sounds like he's blurring fiction with reality. It's like so Stephen Colbert does the same fucking thing. And um, Jon Stewart plays ball with him. Like, it's good to try to get on the show, like, because it's, he can, you know, he can get a platform to talk, but, um, like, I'm not going to try to say, like, John Stewart was shut down. I think he, he quit because he was tired, but it's also, like, the narrative had changed. It wasn't, it wasn't funny to make fun of the president anymore because the president went from being Bush to being a black guy who's untouchable. So... I'm saying that to say that Jon Stewart, there's some things he doesn't want to talk about. There's some things he doesn't want you to know. And he's a big hero, I guess, because he supported the 9-11 first responders, health care. But just remember, the federal government uh, is not supposed to give us health care. It's not supposed to give it to anyone. It's unconstitutional. You need a constitutional amendment before that kind of thing happens legally. And that's why they're not having a Medicare for all vote. Jon Stewart doesn't want to tell you that. Uh, Colbert, Jimmy Dore, Kalinsky, Sam Cedar, they don't want to tell you that. Not because they don't want you to know, because they don't even know. I know I'm telling you how you can do this thing you want legally, and everyone's just like constitutionalist, slavery supporter. But anyway, I would support a, you know, 9-11 first responders health relief bill 
if on the condition that the federal government admits that 9-11 was partially an inside job. I think it was partially inside, partially outside. They work with the Israelis and several other governments, intelligence organizations. But the federal government caused the problem to begin with. They caused 9-11, which caused the 9-11 first responders to have health problems. And it's like, you know, I'm a libertarian, so it's like, okay, maybe if the government caused the problem, they should be the ones to fix it. But like, can we trust them to though? But at the same time, you know, to prove my point and also kind of disprove my point a little bit at the same time, um, I'm grateful to John Stewart for pointing out the same thing, which is that the government and the government science is fixing the problem of coronavirus that they themselves started. So Stewart's right to say that the government is just solving a problem that it started to begin with. But we have to be worried about people like John Stewart because he supports a draft. He supports growing government and giving 9-11 first responders health care. It makes the government look good. It makes John Stewart and Donald Trump and Congress look good. And they're not good. They're evil people who want any reason to spend more money. And if they spend more money, some of it's going to go to the police without us knowing. And they could pull off terrorist attacks or fake terrorist attacks. And, you know, whether the government stops it or not, they still spend more money because it's like if they don't stop the attack, we will we need more resources. And if they do stop the attack, well, job well done. Here's your reward. It's always more money to the police, more money to the police. And that's what this John Stewart, you know, slapping himself on the back for getting 9-11 first responders health care. Uh, that's what this is about. John Stewart supports a draft. OK, here's what he said in 2015 or earlier. There should. Sorry, I don't have more information about where this quote came from. But he said there should be a draft where every young person has to do one year of something, military, public works, something so that we all feel invested in the same game, because that's the part we've lost. Now, admittedly, he's saying you don't have to do military service. You can do public works. But that's what they had in Germany. Not during I'm not talking about the Nazi regime. I don't I'm not commenting on that I'm saying a while ago they had that in Germany. It's like. Oh, if you don't want to be in the military, you can be in a support role for the military, like public work. Like, that's what that's implying. I'm a security guard. I'm already in a support role for the military. I can't find a job that's not government licensed. I can't find a job that wants to boycott the evil government that's starting 150 fucking wars across the whole country. I can't find a job that's not in a support position for the military. I'm already serving more than my one year of service as a young person, John Stewart. My taxes go to buy bombs that are fucking dropped by Israeli military onto Palestinian children. I didn't approve of that. People you know approved of that, John Stewart. You know what John Stewart did when they asked him whether whether he was surprised when Anthony Weiner was caught sexting pictures of his penis to teenage girls as young as 15? John Stewart laughed. He stifled his laughter and he said he was surprised. John Stewart's a fucking joker. Anthony Weiner roomed with him in college. They've known with him. They've known each other for a long time. And shortly before Anthony Weiner got busted for sexting teenage girls, John Stewart had him on his show. And it seemed like they were laughing about something, something they didn't want to talk to us about. And John Stewart stifling his laughter when asked and said, yes, I was surprised. I was surprised when Anthony Weiner, I had never, I had never, I never had any idea that Anthony Weiner liked teenage girls. And then it spiraled into this whole thing with his wife, Huma Abedin, and like, who knows whether Hillary Clinton was involved and maybe Anthony Weiner had child porn. And like, he served like a fucking year and a half in prison. And John Stewart roomed with him in college and probably talked to him about girls, literal girls, including women, uh, women and girls, I'm saying. They probably talked about that shit for 20, 30 years. John Stewart probably knew Anthony Weiner was into teenage girls for 30 fucking years. John Stewart supports a draft. John Stewart covered for Anthony Weiner. John Stewart sucks up to Donald Trump. And John Stewart is still trying to suck up to the liberal media by dunking one on Stephen Colbert after he spent so long in silence and stopped his show when Stephen Colbert was at the height of his power, confusing people with nihilism into laughing at jokes that come out of a conservative context, that come out of wanting to ridicule liberals and ridicule people who don't want to get murdered by the government. You remember when Trevor Noah, was it Trevor Noah or Larry Wilmore who made you laugh at Otto Warmbier when the North Korean government was about to kill him and he was begging for his life? Otto Warmbier was begging for his life in a video. One of those Daily Show or Larry Wilmore assholes showed it, maybe Trevor Noah, and the audience laughed. 
The host didn't stop them from laughing. This guy was about to get murdered. He got beaten to death by North Korean authorities, and he died when he came back to this country. Otto Warm Beer. And the Daily Show or whatever affiliated show's audience laughed at, when, at that kid when he was begging for his life. He wasn't even 21 years old, and now he's dead. And the Daily Show audience laughed at him. If it wasn't exactly the Daily Show audience, I apologize. This is probably just a bunch of people who worked on the exact same show. Now, keep in mind who worked for the Daily Show. Steve Carell, who is on The Office, which has now been called out for its racist jokes and racist treatment of Asian American women on the set and in the show, fiction and reality. They don't care whether you're making fun of Asian women or making fun of people who make fun of Asian women over at The Office. That's Steve Carell. That's Steve Carell of The Daily Show. You know who else is at The Daily Show? Vance DeGeneres. He wasn't, he's not very famous. He's a comedian who was on there for a while in the early 2000s. He's the brother of Ellen DeGeneres, who fucking makes fun of her guests for being whores and for being crazy and for being drug addicts. I know I could put that more lightly, but Ellen DeGeneres makes fun of her guests. That's the ideology of shows like The Office. You or shows like Community, all the NBC shows, it's like, yeah, we love having foreigners around so we can make fun of them. That's the neoliberal mindset. Begging the government to stifle someone else's free speech. That's the liberal mindset. And Jon Stewart, he might not play into that mindset, but he's not doing enough to distance himself from it. He's not doing enough to call it out. He's sucking up to Donald Trump so that people can appreciate that he's sticking up for people who responded to 9-11 without he doesn't want to question the official narrative of 9-11 though